Hey guys, so I've just finished watching the Zack Snyder Justice League and I thought I'd just make a video because I really wanted to get my thoughts down about this film while it's fresh in my mind. Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to do this video but I've just started watching Cyrus Martin's reaction and as soon as I started watching Cyrus' video, hello Cyrus if you're watching, I was just like, yeah I need to do this, I need to talk about it myself as well. So I haven't watched Cyrus' video yet, I'm going to finish watching it after I've recorded this but as you can see I'm a fan of Zack Snyder's work I'm also a fan of Suicide Squad uh, David Ayer and Patty Jenkins Wonder Woman as well good films but most importantly I love Zack Snyder's vision ever since I saw Man of Steel back in 2012-2013 on Blu-ray because I was just absolutely blown away by that film I had no expectation didn't know what it was about and I went in completely blind and was just blown away by that movie and I still continue to be, it's a masterpiece. And then I saw BVS at the cinema and it was like a religious experience, which is bizarre as I've never read a comic book in my life. I only know these characters from TV and film, so I was absolutely amazed that that happened. But yeah, it was an incredible experience. And then when I got the director's cut on Blu-ray, the ultimate edition, and it just made the film even better. I mean, just like, how is that possible? But yes, it did. It, the Ultimate Cut is just incredible at BBS. And so, I remember in 2017, I went to see Justice League. And I was sorely disappointed. I remember walking out of the cinema, just like, I was so conflicted. I was like, I don't know what to make of that. And I went back the following day and watched it again. And I was still like, oh, this is not very good. And I've watched it many times in, over the years. And I, I'm always different every time I watch the film. I'm like, it's okay to, oh, I really like that to, oh, it's a bit crap, or I, I, it's such a mess of a film. And it's like, there's, there's things that I love about that, the Justice League, Joss Whedon's version. There's a lot of things I don't like. In particular, I hate the way they treated Flash. I hate, absolutely hate with a passion what they did to Superman. Because I know that Superman fans like the whole truth, justice, American way and all that citizens crap. But I hated that. <laughs> it absolutely, oh, it's just horrible. Especially coming off Man of Steel because it's a totally different character in those films. Uh, oh, yeah. And so I was, I was really, really disappointed with Justice League the more I watched it. And, you know, as I said, there are things that I do actually like about the theatrical release. There are good points. But... If anyone doesn't know that's watching this, and I'm sure you do because why would you be watching this video otherwise? There was a whole movement to bring out Zack Snyder's original vision for Justice League. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that went on. If you want to know why the Snyder Cut exists, there's plenty of videos on YouTube. Go and check out Cinema Blend. They've done loads of videos about it. I'm not going to go into detail. So I'm just going to assume you know all that while you're watching this. But yeah, today, on the 18th of March, 2021, we finally got to see the proper Justice League film that we should have got three and a half years ago in 2017. And it was absolutely fantastic. Four hours of absolute awesome film. And it, the pacing is absolutely bang on because I never got bored once. It does break it up into parts, which is really helpful if you want to go to the loo or make a drink or grab something to eat like I did. But it's just, it's amazing. I remember watching it tonight and well, I remember like it happened ages ago and I only just finished I watched it uh, today, so I've just finished the four hour, I'm just so sort of, all over the place. Part one ended, and I paused it to go and get a drink, and I was like 56 minutes into the film, and I was like, that's never been an hour. It was so fast, but it was like, it wasn't like just bombarding with information, it was a really nice pace, and just completely gripped by what's on the screen. So I'm, I'm just gonna really talk about a couple of things that I really liked, and just, I can't really, avoid spoilers so if you don't like if you haven't seen the film you don't want to know spoilers just don't watch this video until afterwards because i don't know if i'm going to spoil anything and people spoilers are subjective sometimes not always but sometimes anyway so the first thing i really want to talk about is the intro to the film i absolutely love that i thought it was amazing you know that original intro when you get that crap with the kids talking to superman he's got the jd moustache thing going on uh, i hated that but i did like when they did the the next scene where you see Batman on the rooftop with a parademon and that criminal. I actually thought that was all right. I know some people don't like that. I personally thought it was pretty cool. But this is so much better and way more in line with what we've had from Man of Steel and BBS. BBS begins where Man of Steel ends with the Zod and Superman fight, 
but you see it from a different perspective of Bruce Wayne getting the helicopter, dropping down, jumping in his truck and driving through the city and just seeing all the devastation. It's absolutely incredible. And this one end, um, begins where BBS ends with Superman being killed and Doomsday. And it's just, it's amazing. And what I loved, I absolutely loved the way they did it, that Superman as he's dying is screaming out in pain and you get the shock waves that go throughout the universe and through, the, through Earth. So you see like the Atlanteans and you see, uh, um, <laughs> I forgot what they're called, Amazonians, Jesus. I always have a and you see all of these characters all being impacted by Superman's death. It's such a brilliant way to open the film. It just, I was really, really, it was so much better. And I watched it, and I'm watching it, I'm sitting there going, this is the way the film should open. The tone's right, the, the score is right, the visuals are right, the whole color palette throughout the film is consistent and brilliant. And in contrast with the other films, Man of Steel and BBS, it's just absolute perfection. And yeah, I mean, even the score, all throughout the music and the sound effects are so bloody good. One of my favorite moments is when you see Barry Allen's Flash rescue um, Iris West from a car crash. And that bit, piece of music is so emotionally stirring and it really, it just, it, in that moment with that bit of music and that one scene, tells you everything about their relationship that's gonna come. And I was, I was so blown away by that. And The Flash, I hate The Flash in 2017. I've watched that film many times. Cannot stand The Flash. I thought he was absolute shite. Way too much comedy in that version of the film because it was Joss Whedon anyway. But they made The Flash really, really dumb. In this, just by changing the music in certain scenes, like when Barry Allen first meets Bruce Wayne and the sound effect of the Bataranger, completely and utterly changes the scene and completely and utterly changes the tone and the way I perceive Barry, Barry Allen as well as the character. It's amazing what the difference is. So yeah, I was, I was so, so impressed. Um, it's just incredible. I'd say it's a four hour epic. Seems like a long time, but it goes by so quickly. And there's so much good stuff in there. And there's all these extra scenes. And just like BVS Ultimate Cut, you get a little bit extra. In some of the scenes we've seen previously, there's extra information that they add on. Even little things like they had the extra scene where Diana goes and when, the, when they fire the arrow to alert her and she finds out. They show her actually picking it up and going and investigating and finding out what happened, like they did with BVS where they sent Clark Kent into Gotham to investigate the Batman. It adds just so many more layers to the film and makes it so much easier to follow as well. I really, I just have to question what the hell Warner Brothers were doing in 2017. I know that they were being reactionary because of the critical response to BVS and Man of Steel and the fan response. But come on, what the hell were they thinking? You cannot possibly compare these two films. That 2017 film is in no way in the same uh, league. It doesn't correspond. It's just, it's, just, it's just a total separate thing. It's not anything to do with the, the two Zack Snyder films. And when you watch this version, obviously it's Zack's original vision, and you can see the through line and it's perfect all the way through. It's absolutely bloody brilliant. I love it. And there's just there's just so many great moments, so much great action, so many brilliant story bits. Cyborg finally gets a full story. He doesn't, you know, kind of, because he didn't really have much to do in the last one, in the 2017 version. And I don't know why they did that, because Cyborg was my favorite part of the film in the original one. But in this one, you get to see all of the stuff about him being an American football player, the accident, the reason he ends up becoming Cyborg, all the things that happen with his mother and father. There's so much more to it. It's absolutely fantastic. They fixed Batman as well. They made Bruce Wayne and Batman a, a bit of a pussy in the 2017 version, where you know he's grizzled and a bit of a bastard in BVS, but in the 2017 Justice League, they completely softened him and I hated what they did to him. And you know that's another thing about the comedy. They took all of the comedy out of this version. There's none of it. I mean, obviously Zach says he's never watched Joss Whedon's version, so he has no concept of what's in that film. He only knows what he filmed and what he wanted to put out into the universe. And uh, it's, it's just so much better. It's absolutely brilliant. So yeah, I'm absolutely blown away. And uh, the ending, <laughs> I ain't going to tell you what the ending is if you've not seen it. But the ending was really, really cool. That was that was epic, man. Um, obviously, if you've seen the trailer, you know the Joker's in the film. That bit was absolutely outstanding. Not what I was expecting it to be at all. I, I mean, obviously I knew it was going to be some kind of dream sequence, but the actual scene itself, the way it plays out, really, really cool. And then the ending was just like, oh man. Yeah, it just gave me everything I wanted. It's a real shame we're not going to get Justice League too, but there is a, another 
campaign to restore the Snyderverse, hashtag restore the Snyderverse. So fingers crossed, who knows, maybe if we get really lucky because normally I would say there's no chance, like I didn't think this would happen. I signed the petition years ago thinking, well, there's no way in hell they're ever gonna put the money behind it to bring that out. But it turns out they did, so <laughs> $70 million later and we ended up with the Snyder Cut and it, it was well worth every penny. Uh, the only criticism I've got, and this is a personal thing because I know nothing about how films are made, how they're shot, about ratios and things, but I hate the 4 by 3 It done my nothing. I know it's because of IMAX, I know the reason why they did it, I know it, but the point is, this film wasn't going to cinema, it was going to home theatres and it was going to be on streaming because of the pandemic, so... If we can see it in the future, it'd be right, but I don't have an IMAX anywhere near me, so I'll never get to see it properly. Uh, that's kind of an honour. I wish they could have put out two versions, really, just put out a 4x3 version. And if it's possible, because it might cost too much, I don't know, do a 16 version, just for just because I want consistency between the three films and because I just prefer the way it looks. I just, yeah, for the, for the top and bottom that you get, I don't really think it's necessary. I think just crop it and stick it in 16 but... You know, I know some people will say that's sacrilege, I don't give a shit, that's just the way, I'm just a fan, I'm not a bloody, um, I don't make films, so there you go. <laughs> but yeah, overall, very impressed, brilliant film, highly recommend going to see it. If you're in the UK as well, it's on Sky Cinema, you can also get it through Now TV as well, actually what I did, I did a seven day trial just so I could watch the film, and it was absolutely phenomenal. There's just so much, I need to watch it another couple of times and then I can really analyse and just you know really go over it more but yeah i was really blown away and i just needed to make this video and i say after watching Sai, i've just seen how emotional he is at the beginning of his video and i thought yeah man i gotta talk about this i'm just such a huge fan of these films and i have been ever since i saw man of steel so and you know bvs is my favorite comic book film of all time i love all the marvel stuff but bvs for me is the best you know and you know i know dc's had a bumpy ride Depends how you look at it. I personally like, I've liked, I'm trying to think of anything I haven't liked. No, the only thing I haven't liked from DC has been Wonder Woman 1984. That's just one other thing actually, thinking about it, I wanted to point out as well. The thing that amazed me was the, the beginning scene, which is also in the Joss Whedon cut, but it's a longer version in this and has a bit extra, which is better. Uh, hence the reason it's longer. Is the Wonder Woman scene at the beginning when she rescues the children. I'm watching that and I'm like, why can't Patty Jenkins do that? Why can't she represent Wonder Woman that way? I know everyone loves Patty Jenkins and I like the first film. I don't love it, but I like it. I didn't like 1984 at all, it was crap. Um, well, that's a bit harsh. It was underwhelming at least. I was quite bored watching it, let's put it that way. But I just felt that, I don't know what it is, but there's just something about the way that Zack directed Gal Gadot and the way he created the Wonder Woman character that for me at least, it just works better. Just in that one scene, never mind the whole film, she's absolutely phenomenal all the way through this film. But I just felt that she works so much better with Zack Snyder than she does with Patty Jenkins. Uh, this, this, I don't know what it is, it's just, I don't know, it's just him, he's, he's a genius any, obviously. Not that Patty is, and Patty's great, but I just think that, I don't know, she doesn't seem to get Gal Gadot's performance out of her the way that Zack does. Not for me, anyway. But yeah, absolutely great. Um, if you're a fan, you've probably already seen. If you haven't, you know, please do go and check it out. If you've never seen Man of Steel and BVS, go and watch Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's a long watch, you know. I mean, you're talking about, I think it's just over two hours for Man of Steel, and it's three hours for BVS, and then just under four hours for this Justice League. But it's worth every minute of your time. You're going to have such a blast watching them. I mean, I'm, this is coming from somebody who's never read a DC comic in my life. You know, I don't read comics. Uh, I just go by... All I've ever seen with Batman is basically Adam West, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer. I still haven't watched George Clooney, I need to watch that. And of course, uh, the Christopher Nolan trilogy with, uh, what's his face? Christian Bale, Welsh fella. Um, yeah, which is, you know, a masterpiece in itself. Though that trilogy is perfection. And, uh, you know, Zach's got a perfect trilogy now. It's a shame he couldn't finish off what he wanted to do, but yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, guys. If you've seen Zack Snyder's Justice League and you've seen the original Justice League, well, let me know your thoughts down below. Which ones do you prefer and why? Um, if you've never watched the 2017 film and you know, you're know you watching this for the first time, let me know. Just let me know your thoughts down below. I'm absolutely blown away. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, look forward to reading your comments down below. Bye, guys.